Well, number two, and, and this, this is probably the, the critical lesson. I think most people go along with the spirit-filled part. But what they struggle with is they don't know, once they get off with a flat tire, they think that they've ruined their spiritual life. They think they're bad. They think no one else has ever had a flat tire. They think that nobody else is walking along pushing their bike. Did and you know that's what goes on at church. People are totally flat tired, but they don't want to admit it to anybody. And they're trying their hardest to keep up with everybody else here, trying to be happy, trying to know something about the Lord, trying to serve the Lord, trying to do what they're supposed to do, and they are totally flat. And normal spiritual life... Now, see, this, this is what's so important. Normal spiritual life knows that we are going to be constantly in need of repairing the leaks that come in life. Now, look in Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Right here is the verse. And, and think about this as a reminder of the leak causers. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now, what is normal Christian life? Paul alludes to another way our spiritual lives can become. The first way is 518. We are supposed to stay full. But Paul said there's a second level that Christians can get in. They can get into this dangerous territory of letting things come into their life that are total enemies of spirit fullness. And these things grieve the one that fills us and causes his power in our lives to be dissipated by the little choices we make. Now, Stick with me, because this is probably the, the, the mystery. In all the years that I've, I've discipled for three decades, this is the piece where people, they know spirit fullness is what God wants, but they cannot figure out how to get out of their flat, tire life. They think they're cursed for the rest of their life to be way behind and red-faced, huffing and puffing, trying to keep up with the spiritual pack. And they don't realize that there's this giant repair truck that follows them all the time. And it can instantly, new tire, refilled, you know, aired up, go. Have you ever watched the, the races? They have that little truck that's right there to help them, you know, and handing out water bottles to them and fixing their tires on these big races. That's the spiritual life. Only the designer of the bike the one who gave it to us is the one that wants to repair and refill. Now think how that works. Have you ever had a bike with a leaky tire? You always have to check the tire, grab the pump, get it back to full inflation. You find you need it when you jump on it. It can't hold you up. In fact, every time I go out with my boys, that happens. I go, oh, you guys, hold on. The tire is soft. The bike won't work the way it should. That is the state we as believers find ourselves described in Ephesians 4.30 when we grieve the Holy Spirit. In fact, the word grieve in verse 30 is lupeo in Greek. It means to make sad, to make heavy, to make sorrowful, and to make distressed. Lupeo. The Holy Spirit is a person. And our choices that we make either gladden and please him or lupeo him. Make him sad, sorrowful, grieved, heavy. And that process makes our spirit-filled lives leak. When we grieve the spirit, we're leaking out the pressure, the fullness of our lives. Using the bicycle analogy, think about a soft tire. There are many reasons tires lose their air pressure. They can have punctures, the, the wheel rim can be bent, a valve can be cut, so many possibilities.